hello everyone welcome to my youtube channel so today we are going to be looking at common pipetting error and aliquot before we go on my name is dr emmanuel obodo i'm a biomedical scientist and i'm a lecturer in biomedical science here in the united kingdom what exactly is pipetting in the laboratory now you know that with pipetting when we, we use pipette for a lot of things for example we can use pipette to take a certain amount of volume of a liquid or substance okay and analyze what is in that substance and that is why in most pipetting we can use it to take a certain amount of substance maybe a microliter or a milliliters therefore pipetting can then be defined as a laboratory instrument used to measure out small quantity of liquid in volume millimeters or microliter now like i've said this is very very important because when we use pipetting we can take a certain amount of liquid let's say certain for example a certain amount of serum or plasma and we can measure what is in that serum or plasma that is pipetting and what it means that if we dip, if we are using pipette to take a certain amount of substance and measure what is in that substance it means that there is a need to make sure that we are taking accurate amount of the substance for example some of the laboratory protocol might demand or my there can be a recommendation that you should take maybe 50 microliter or 100 microliter or 20 microliter as the case may be to perform an analysis now what it means that then it is important then to make sure that the recommended volume in microliter or meals you are expected to use to carry out that test or analysis it is important to make sure that that, that volume is correctly maintained when pipetting now that is why pipetting is very very important and because it is important therefore it now means that there can be some common errors associated with this pipetting in other words when this is not properly done it, can, it could lead to a number of errors let me give you an example just a quick one now imagine that there's a recommendation that you should use 50 microliter to analyze a particular test and due to pipetting error you've taken maybe 50.5 volume of that sort of that liquid what it means that be, that point 0.5 is likely to affect the result you are going to get and that is where pipetting is very very vital so now let us look at the common pipetting errors there are a number of pipetting errors that can be you know experienced in the laboratory number one failure to pre-wet the tips you know sometimes when you've separated maybe the serum or you separated the plasma or whatever li bi biological liquid you know um substance that you want to use for the analysis what happens that sometimes for something like serum you notice that when you have separated it maybe when you bring it out of the freezer or from the fridge as the case may be it is important to make sure you mix the thing properly before you prepare is it now now whatever thing that you want to measure is important to make sure that it is properly mixed together so because sometimes the thing that you are looking for may sediment at the bottom so when you you know pipetting it up and down as the case may be that way it can help to make sure that whatever thing you are pipetting you are going to get an accurate result what it means is that failure to pre-wet the tips where appropriate can affect the laboratory result now number two failure to take into account of the room temperature or maybe the sample temperature it is important to calibrate the pipette and most of the time this can these pipettes are calibrated at the room temperature so what it means is that if you are working in an environment that is outside the room temperature it's important that you put that into consideration another thing is that if you are using a sample that is also outside the room temperature let's say the sample that has come out of the fridge okay the temperature is below the room temperature it is also important that you consider that in your pipetting because when that is not considered it also has the potential of affecting the outcome of that very test or analysis so Failure to put into consideration of the room temperature or the sample temperature can lead to pipetting error. Number three, 
they keep wiping over and again. You know, sometimes when people prepare something, they tend to clean it. Okay, so when you continue to clean the tips, basically you try to wipe the tips. In wiping the tips, you might mistakenly pick out some of the serum or plasma or the liquid substance in that very tip and that means that you may reduce the volume of what you had originally or initially pipetted so when a tips following the pipetting is wiped over and again that can lead to a pipetting error meaning it can lead to a false result number four on even pressure on the pipette button so when you have the pipette button which is at the top okay so when there is a you need to apply a pressure okay evenly to be able to take the sample gently and all of that so when there is an uneven you know unequal application of pressure on that very button okay it might what it may happen that you might mistakenly move into the next step because when you are preparing there are different steps on it so most times you it is recommended that you stay with the first steps okay but if you apply the uneven pressure you might mistakenly move past the first you know steps you are likely to take more than what you should take you are likely to prepare uh, more than the volume required so uneven pressure on the pipette button is one of the common pipetting error another one which is the fifth one could be dispensing fast you know when you pipette and you want to dispense it fastly so when you dispense it fastly there's a lot of things that can lead to that it might have a lot of it might have some bubbles and that could affect the volume that you're supposed to introduce in whatever you know space or area that you want to introduce that very liquid into so once um, you've pipetted and you want to dispense it fastly it means that it can lead to pipetting error and that is one of the common pipetting errors now what it means that if dispensing fast can also lead to the um this pipetting error it means that when you also pipette fast as well it can also lead to a pipetting error another thing which is a sixth one so when you are using a pipette you use a particular tip to pipette different samples so you've used this spirit you use this tip to prepare this sample and instead of the instead of discarding that tip to get another tip you also use the same tip to prepare for another sample what it means that you are likely to introduce what is in the first sample in the second sample and that can lead to a first result making it one of the common and uh, preparing errors so therefore preparing different sample with the same tips it can lead to a preparing error another one which is the seventh one i think is that when you walk quickly so maybe you are walking very quickly you want to meet up whatever thing that you are doing so you are very fast so because you are fast if you are not also careful you may likely to make a mistake in your pipetting techniques and that is where the uneven pressure on the pipetting button can come in okay or maybe you can move into the next step as the case may be so what happened that when you walk quickly you are likely to take either too little or too more okay of what you need to take or maybe when when you are dispensing it or when you are preparing there can be bubbles and that may affect it so therefore working too quickly is one of the common factors that can affect preparing in the laboratory number eight when you prepare at the wrong and that could lead to a wrong preparing techniques okay and what it means that that can affect the volume of what you are going to prepare or maybe what you are going to dispense as the case may be so pipetting at the wrong angle is one of the common factors that can affect pipetting techniques in the laboratory and that is one of the common pipetting errors number nine not assessing the viscosity of the sample so you know that because pipettes with pipetting tips is likely to pick liquid okay more so depending on the viscosity of that very sample so that need to put into consideration when you are preparing. So when you don't assess or you know the viscosity of the sample, that can lead to a preparing error. Another thing that can affect preparing, which I think is the third one now, is that when you prepare without putting into consideration of the required time to do calibration on the pipette or to do a maintenance of the pipette. So it is important to make sure that when pipette is due for maintenance or calibration, that that is properly performed and done. That too, it can help to prevent pipetting error. So failing to perform proper pipette maintenance can lead to a pipetting error. Another thing that can lead to a pipetting error is aspirating air. So when you when you pipette, you pipette air. So you didn't pipette the material because maybe you did not put it properly as the case may be. So when you when you aspirate air, that can lead to a pipetting error. 
The question now is how can we avoid these pipetting errors? One of the ways to avoid pipetting errors is by pipetting slowly and gently. So it's important that when you want to pipette, what is important is to make sure that your techniques are accurate so that you cannot have a false positive or negative result. Therefore, when you are pipetting, you should pipette slowly and gently. That is one of the ways to avoid these common pipetting errors. Now, number two, keep the pipette upright when aspirating the sample. That is very important. Number three, dip the tip slightly into the sample when aspirating. So when you dip the tip slightly into the sample when you are aspirating, it will help you to maintain pipetting techniques and therefore that can limit pipetting errors. When you want to disperse, it's important to disperse at angle 45. And it is also important that when you disperse, you disperse on the side of the container or any materials or where you want to dispense the liquid substance into. I hope that makes sense. These are the four main uh, ways we can be able to avoid these common pipetting errors. Now, that means that if there is pipetting errors, it is important to undergo training. Okay, so now why is it crucial to you know undergo training before using pipette in the laboratory? One of the reasons why it is important is that it helps to minimize the risk of volume variabilities caused by operators. Let me give you an example. So maybe there is two people analyzing on the same thing. There's a first level of testing, the second level of testing, you know, for confirmation. Now, if one person tests it and gets a particular result. If there is a lack of training in pipetting, if the second person comes to test the same thing, there can be a variability in the result. And that variability in the result between the first operator and the second operator is due to of training on how to use pipetting. Number two, it will help to avoid a small fraction of change in pipetting that could give a wrong result. If someone is not well trained to use pipette, what will happen is that there can be some fraction of changes, okay, that can happen when the person is pipetting and that could lead to either false positive or negative result or give a wrong result. Therefore, that is why it is important and crucial that someone is trained before um, allowed to use pipette in the laboratory. Now, because pipetting is important, okay, especially when it comes to aliquot, okay, and this is common in biochemistry. Now, before I explain this, I want to explain something to you. Imagine in biochemistry or maybe in other departments as well, like immunology, you know, even in hematology as well, that can still happen, where maybe you have a small volume of a sample and you need to analyze that sample. What happens is that if you put that small volume, the analyzer is likely to pipette what it should not be supposed to prepare. For example, the analyzer can pick, let's say, what you're analyzing is serum or plasma, okay? Now, especially in case of plasma, and if there's a short plasma, what will happen is the analyzer, the, the, the probe of the analyzer might go beyond the plasma and pick red blood cells, you see it now? And that may lead to maybe blockage of the uh, probe or maybe even lead to a false uh, positive or maybe negative result, okay? So that is why it is important, important. now. What it means that when you get a short sample or insufficient sample or underfill sample as the case may be, now that sample that may not be sufficient, what you might need to do is to have a little covert where you can just take pipette, you know, a certain amount of you know um that plasma and put in that covert before loading it into the analyzer. What it means that because it is only the plasma, when the analyzer probe goes in. No matter what happened, it can only pick the plasma because you have not only quartz, you have separated, you have taken small portion or you have taken a portion of that very uh, plasma or serum as the case may be in that covert and that way when the analyzer aspirates, it will not aspirate red blood cell as the case may be, okay? So now, pipetting techniques are used in this aliquoting. So what it means like when you want to aliquot, there is a need to pipette. You can pipette maybe using something like pasture pipette as well. So there's a need to pipette when you are aliquoting. So the question now is what is then aliquot? We now know that we can use pipette to do aliquot. What is aliquot? Aliquot is a small fraction of a total quantity of a liquid volume. Okay. What it means is that aliquot can be seen as a non-homogeneous material used in the laboratory to minimize sampling error. Now, why is that important? It is important because, like I've said, when you have a short sample, 
you have to allow quote maybe into a covert that way when you put it in the, into the analyzer the analyzer when the probe goes in it will just take only the plasma or the serum as the case may be but if you have if you have not done that if you have not allow quote the analyzer probe is likely to pass through the plasma or serum and pick maybe red blood cell or even possibly pick a clot and that can affect that result or even block the probe and that is why in order to prevent sampling error it is important to aliquot i hope i've been able to explain um pipetting and common pipetting error and also that how pipetting is important in aliquot okay and what aliquot means okay so that is it i hope that makes sense let me know what you think about the video please can i ask you to like share and subscribe thank you very much and i wish you all the best till i come back your way again